Today's guest is one of my favorite humans in the health industry. Hopefully you guys already know Ben Asadi, but if you don't, it's my pleasure to introduce you to him today. So let me tell you a little background about Ben. We're going to dive into this episode, but um, in 2008, Ben was obese. Um, he ended up losing 80 pounds. He went on this like simultaneous health and entrepreneur journey that he's going to share with you. He got really depressed. He opens up that he was like really at the end of his rope and was like looking into suicide and all of those things. And really just getting into personal development woke him up and he, I, I won't spoil it too much. He shares that journey of like finding himself. It's so inspiring. Um, since then he's the author of four best-selling books. Um, he has his whole, his company is called um, Keto Camp. Hopefully you guys listen to his podcast. Super informative. Ben is one of those guys that he's super, super smart. So he knows a lot. He has so much good information, but he also has that heart where you know that he really, truly cares. And I so appreciate that about him. Um, we're diving into his entrepreneurial journey, but also his health journey and the things that really, really have helped him. I love his take on how he looks at getting healthy. It's so um, logical and straight to the point and gets rid of all this like BS stuff. So I won't spoil it too much. I'll let him tell you um, his like core facets of what it takes to get healthy. So anyway, I think you guys are gonna love this interview. I love Ben. I love his energy. We'll go ahead and dive in. Here is Ben Asadi. All right. I got one of my favorite humans in the health industry for you guys today. A lot of you probably know this face if you're looking on YouTube, but if you're listening, I, you probably saw the title already. And that's why you're listening. Cause I got Ben Asadi here with me. And I don't know if you guys don't follow Ben, first of all, you definitely need to follow Ben because he's one of those people that puts out so much incredible content. It's like every single piece is like, wow, that was valuable. So the Ben Asadi on Instagram and TikTok, And are you active on like Facebook and stuff too? Yeah. Facebook, yeah. LinkedIn, Twitter, all that. Okay. Stuff. Cool. Yeah. He's everywhere. And like, he's, you're like a, just this entrepreneur on freaking fire and just serving like crazy. So yeah, it's, it's fun to watch your journey, but what, if, if you're new to people, or maybe they don't know this about you. Cause they see this like very healthy, you know, <laughs> trim guy, but they may not know they used to be obese. You lost 80 pounds. And so I was telling Ben before we started, I was like, I feel like we went on this similar trajectory that getting healthy catapulted us into our life purpose and serving others and using all the stuff that we learned in the trenches for our own self to help other people. And we, you can tell that we're both very like super engaged and like, we just want to help. We just want to help. And so I wanted to start on that. Can you take us back? I want, as we go through this journey, I'm hoping we can drop some gems for people for like the big hitters that you learned along the way. And then we'll cap with like a bunch of brainy nerdy stuff. So <laughs> Let's go back to 80 pounds heavier, Ben, you know, like yes. what, what was the stimulus to get you to change? Yeah. Okay. Let's get, let's go back there. Well, first of all, thank you for having me, Tara. I love yeah. what you're doing. You're also somebody who's so determined and committed and you're serving so many people. You came on my keto camp podcast and served my community. So thank you for what you're doing and for the invitation today. We're going to have some yeah. fun. Uh, so yeah, 24 year old Ben, uh, 2008 followed a standard American diet most of my life, which we both know, highly processed, toxic diets. And not only that, I had a really bad upbringing, meaning I was a really bad kid. I skipped school, dropped out of high school, finished in night school, did drugs, sold drugs in high school, addictions to drugs, to video games, to toxic environment, sugar. Wow. And when I was 24 years old, I was working at a nine to five job that I was not inspired to do. And my girlfriend at that time, we were together for almost four years and she decided to break up with me because the relationship was going nowhere. I did not know how to handle that devastation of the breakup. I, at this point, I weighed 250 pounds, physically obese, never exercised, never studied nutrition. All I wanted to do was play video games and get, and I was actually really damn good at video games. <laughs> and she broke up with me and I was devastated, Tara. I was depressed. I was crying every single day. I had to surround myself with people because when I was in a room by myself, I just kept thinking about hurting myself and ending my life because I was tired of suffering for months. Wow. I just kept thinking about committing suicide. I, I actually wow. explored suicide. And every time I explored suicide, the first thought that came into my mind was, what would my mom have to deal with if I took my life? I, I loved my mom. I do love my mom to this day. And I didn't want her to deal with that devastation. So it was a vicious cycle of wow. exploring suicide, thinking about my mom, stopping myself, exploring suicide, thinking about my mom, stopping myself. And that was for months until 
I picked up a book. Actually, a friend of mine handed me a book. One book led to five books, led to 10 books. And I became obsessed with studying authors like Bob Proctor, Dr. Mm -hmm. Wayne Dyer, Jim Rohn, Tony Robbins. And the books did so much for me. It opened up a whole new world. But the most important thing that the books did for me, for the first time in my life, the books helped me take ownership and responsibility for yeah. my results. Yeah. Up until that point, Tara, I was the victim. And that word responsibility is very important nowadays. I believe our greatest ability is our responsibility. And my ability to respond up until that point was poor. I was the victim of my enabling family members, my slow metabolism, my bad genes, and I was just blaming everybody for my problems. And I remember Wayne Dyer, Dr. Wayne Dyer said, if other people are the cause for your problems, you would have to hire a psychiatrist for the rest of the world in order for you to get better. <laughs> and I was like, that is so true. And I yeah. stopped being the victim of my history. And I started to become the victor of my destiny. And I started to exercise, started to eat better. I started to become aware of my thoughts. And mm. I went through the, this entire transformation. In nine months, I went from 250 pounds down to 170 pounds, 34% body fat down to 6% body fat, size 38, waist to size 30. So for the first time ever, I carved out a physical six pack. But the most important thing that I achieved was this mental six pack. I yeah. started to think better thoughts. And that's what got me started in the health space. I became a personal trainer. I opened up a CrossFit gym, sold the CrossFit gym, and I've been learning things along the way, which we'll get into. But that's my story. That was 14 years ago, and I'm committed to educating as, as many people as possible now. Wow. Yeah. I, the, all of those same teachers were the ones I had. So no wonder we resonate so much with each other that. with Bob Proctor and Jim Rowan. And don't you just love, if you guys have not listened to those people that he just met, read their Please. books, you know, Napoleon Hill, think you're going to go rich. I know you read that one. And you know, Bob, Bob Proctor's the art of living was an intro for me. Yeah. And then yes, just geeking out on all the Tony Robbins stuff. And it's just, it's a fun journey. You know, it's like, you're learning so much along the way. And I always tell people, I'm like, most of this is accessible to you for free on the internet. Like just go on YouTube and you can at least listen to these guys for free. You can, I'm like, you can literally change your whole life for free on YouTube. You really can. If you're, sure. if you're curious, you might get a few books that maybe, you know, if shoot, you could go to the library if you want to do like, you can literally, you can change your life for free. And I'm so grateful for these people. And that's probably, I think what kind of sparks that in us too, was like, I'm so grateful for the people that spread what they knew to me that helped facilitate such a huge life transformation. If I can pass that along, like free that I'm so grateful to, you know, cause I'm so grateful for that. I'm so Absolutely. what I'm hearing from you is like, while you were simultaneously, you were taking accountability for everything in your life, taking responsibility for everything in your life. And that just immediately affected you on the physical level too. You were like, I'm not taking responsibility for my body at all. Or was, was there more stimulus on the health end of things or? Wow. Yeah. I mean, it, it begins with responsibility yeah. and, and, you know, it's impossible to say those words. I am responsible and still be angry and resentful. So <laughs> I, I said it out loud. I shouted out, I am responsible. And every time I kept wow. getting, going back to my old paradigm of, of blaming others and right. my poor self image, I just kept reminding myself that mm. my self-limiting thoughts. And look, I know we all have self-limiting thoughts. I know you have them, Tara, the most yep. successful people in the world still have them, For but sure. the difference between those who are successful and getting amazing results and those who are stuck and going backwards is the people who are successful understand that those thoughts that we have that are limiting us has everything to do with our conditioning and this paradigm, this multitude of behaviors, and it has nothing to do with our present situation or our potential. So I just kept reminding myself, these are, this is just my conditioning. It has nothing to do with what I'm going to achieve. And that was the catapult, right? But even though I lost the 80 pounds, Tara, I, I still didn't feel that healthy. I, I was one of those fit, sick people where I had a lot of acne, digestive issues. So it took me many, many years of exploring health and to really understand what real cellular health felt like. Right. And that wasn't until 2013, 2014 that I started to research ketosis and intermittent fasting and detox. And I started to really dive deep. So it took quite some time. And, and I think that's a very important thing to share because as you could attest to, there's a lot of people that might have six pack abs and might yeah. be fit on the outside, but they're not healthy on the inside. And I was right. one of them. So I wanted right. to figure Me out too. what real health looked like and felt like. And I believe that, you know, I'm on my way to achieving that. 
Yeah. I know that you learned a lot from Dr. Pompa. So I, yeah. our audience might be, how did that whole thing happen? So you like, you got really fit. I'm sure you went kind of like the, well, I'm, I'm guessing, did you go like the kind of like almost bodybuilder route of like chicken, broccoli, that kind of whole thing, but it's all about body composition and that's it. Like there's nothing else. It's just only about body composition. That's it. And yep. then, you know, you're, you know, you're a personal trainer, you got a gym going. How did you stumble across like keto and a health optimization and all that stuff? What was your intro? So yeah, I did exactly that. Calorie counting, broccoli, yeah. chicken, that pe that peanut butter powder called PB2 that like yes. reduces the fat, putting that in my shakes, rice, yep. you know, those those little rice crispy treats, not rice crispy, the rice cakes. Yes. Um, and then in 2013, I was actually coming off of being a vegan. I was a vegan for a year and a half. Really? Strict vegan, duped wow. by the chi the China study book. Uh, <laughs> didn't know how to like really do any research, but the book convinced me that being a vegan is the healthiest thing for you, you and the planet, right? Right. So I was, a, imagine this, Tara, a cross-fitting vegan. Now we know that people who cross-fit can't shut up about the fact that they do cross-fit. We know that people right. who are vegans can't shut up about being vegan. So a vegan crossfitter <laughs> will <laughs> run its mouth nonstop <laughs> about being a vegan crossfitter. So I was plant powered. I wore t-shirts, plant powered, and my health suffered as a result. You know, the I first few months it. were great, but soreness from workouts, brain fog, hormonal issues. So a year and a half into it, I'm like, all right, it's not working. Let me do some lab work, verified it's not working for me. And then I started to get into the work of Paul Check, Dave Asprey, Dr. Pompa, Dr. Joe Mercola, and, that's where, and, and Jimmy Moore. And that's where I discovered ketosis. And I read several books on it, started to do some research. And it was really fascinating to me. And it made a lot of sense that our ancestors all experienced this amazing metabolic uh, process. And I paired it with intermittent fasting and it really took my health to another level. And I really fell in love with it. And I started to teach it. I did seminars at my CrossFit gym about intermittent fasting and, and keto and people did not want to hear that back then, mm. but I was determined. I kept doing workshops. Mm. And then to answer your question with Dr. Pompa, who I believe, and I'm a little biased when I say this, but I believe he's like the greatest, he's the Michael Jordan, the goat of health <laughs> education. The guy is so brilliant. Yeah. I started studying his work and he was doing a seminar in Boca Raton, Florida. I'm in Miami, Florida. So Boca is like two hours north of me. I went to a seminar. This is about four years ago. In the first hour of being at a seminar, I learned more about nutrition and health than my entire several years prior to that of studying. And I stuck for the entire seminar. It was his live it to lead it seminar. And I, at that seminar, I still owned my CrossFit gym at that time. I still had my brick and mortar, but I made the decision. I said, I want this, I want to know everything this man knows and I want him to teach it to me. <laughs> I didn't know how it was going to happen, but I made that decision. And, you know, lo and behold, uh, now I work with him and Dr. Mindy Pels and a few other doctors and he teaches me. We train every Tuesday. I get to learn. I feel like uh, when I first started working with Dr. Pompa, I felt like a rookie going into the NBA with Michael Jordan as my mentor, right? Yeah. So uh, I'm so grateful and so blessed to be able to learn from him and study with him. And uh, we, I just learned so much every week from this guy. Yeah. You hit on something so huge. <laughs> We're so like-minded because sometimes, so I'm not a registered dietitian and people have asked me, I love school. I'm really good at school. I can a school. Like that is like my bread and butter. I can jam. I can memorize stuff like all that. But I'm like, I, my mentality has been who is currently the best in the world. And can I learn from them? Can I, if I try hard enough, can I learn from them? Because they're actively executing that. I'm like, you're learning so much more than just studying like the HBA access on a test, you know, and nothing against right registered dietitians or anything like that. It's just my mentality is like, I want to learn from like the best. Yes. I want my core and I have my certifications, all that kind of stuff, but I want to learn from the best. Who's the best. Can I learn from them? And that mentality, that kind of drive of like, I'm going to that it propels you. It's I'm so grateful for my mentors that I've had that way too, because yeah. it just, it's, it, you're exactly right. It takes you from like rookie to elite, like yeah. very, very, very quickly. So what a blessing. And yeah, I, wanna, okay. I love that. You're, you we're so alike Tara. <laughs> yeah. I say that all the time. I'm like, who's the best in the world at this thing? Okay. How can I learn from them? <laughs> that's how you take, that's how you take decades and turn that into days. It, it, right. It's, it's so true. And there are people out there, you know, if whatever, if you're listening and you have a specific field you're in, use the same philosophy. Like who's right. somebody who has done the things you want to do 
and have them teach it to you. Even if you have to pay them to have them teach it to you, it is so worth it. It's oh, such a yeah. shortcut. Yeah. I've spent a lot of money on that. And even if, even if they just have like podcasts, like just consume yep. as much as you can from how they think, like notice the nuances. How did they handle that thing? Ah, interesting. You know, like you got to pick up on some of the, the nuances, I believe it. Right. But if you can learn from them directly, you're going to pick up on a lot of nuances. And it's, it truly is. It's like, how do they react to these certain situations? And you're able to pick up on those little things. And it's so invaluable. Okay. I want to go back though. I want to go back to the China study thing. Cause I know like, oh my gosh, like if there's one thing I will take heat for on social media, it's like, it's, I don't even want to say vegan, like scared and shaking in my boots to even bring it up, man. Cause it's like, Ugh! I'm not, I am so open-minded. I will never bag on anybody's like what they feel is right from their body. As long as it's actually coming from them. And it truly does feel right. And they truly do feel freaking amazing. I'm like, who am I to say that they might not have something going on in their body that that really is optimal for them. Like I honor your truth. My problem is, and we fall, we get this in the keto world too. Sometimes we get a lot of dogma, a lot of dogma. And it's yes. like, this is how it is for everybody. And I see a lot of that veganism. And I, the reason I struggle personally with the vegan world is because it's full of propaganda. It really is. It's like, it's not true. It's like half truths that are bent in weird ways and playing on people's emotions. I'm sorry. It's just what I have witnessed over and over and over. I'm not saying you can't be vegan and be healthy. I'm just saying like a lot of that exists in that world. And I'm owning that it exists in my keto world too. Okay. So, but I want, I want to talk about that China study thing. Can you talk about like where you, what, how you felt after you read about the China study and then what you experienced and what you learned just from your journey. I'm going to say is everybody, you know, vegan, you talked about how it kind of wrecked your hormones and you didn't have low, you had lower energy and stuff like that. But can you speak on veganism in general, just what your professional opinion is in terms of that being the most like optimal path for people on the planet? Yeah. And I, 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 you're right about the dogma. We, we don't want to put ourselves in a box. And I, I did it with the vegan diet. I did it with the keto diet when I first started it as well. Now I'm really aware about, okay, am I, am I just really biased here or am I being dogmatic or is this yeah. the truth? So with the vegan thing, I, I think, I think the vegan diet is great short-term, <laughs> short-term keto, short-term veganism, right? Yeah. I think they're the same philosophy. Uh, the, the problem we have in this day and age and when I say this day and age, the last 50 years is now we're eating the same foods, the same diet over and over and over. It's a new problem. Back before that, for hundreds of thousands of years, we always rotated our foods. It was based on our environment. Now we get to, we have the luxury to choose our foods and we eat the same foods, eat, whether it's a vegan diet or a keto diet or paleo diet. And that's not, first of all, appropriate for the human body. Second, secondly, when you're eating a vegan diet, of course, you're not getting quality fats like cholesterol. We know cholesterol, it, it makes part of the cell membrane. Mm -hmm. It makes a part of the brain up. Cholesterol is super important to consume. It's the building blocks for many hormones and sex hormones. And there's a great book that explains what happens. It's called Vegetarianism Explained. And it's, it's about vegetarianism, but it also touches upon veganism. But it explains how we're essentially, when we're sticking with veganism or vegetarianism for too long, we're essentially starving the body from building blocks that it needs to thrive or sex hormones, even vitamin D is a part of that, the production of vitamin D. And, you know, I think some people can do veganism longer than others, and they could be really smart and strategic with, you know, supplementing and doing testing and com 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 uh, getting proteins that are more complete by kind of mixing them up. But why, ha why do you have to go that whole route when eating quality animal foods, grass-fed red meat, which is complete, so anti-inflammatory? I think veganism has its place short-term, yeah. but I'm not a fan of it long-term. And like you said, if you're truly thriving with a vegan diet, uh, you're doing lab work and you feel phenomenal, you look phenomenal, your lab work backs right. it up, then maybe you stick with it, right? Don't right. listen to totally. us here. But if you feel like deep down, like you feel off, you're going backwards, then maybe you start right. exploring with some other foods. Yeah. yeah, well said. And I, you know, I won't go off on a tangent about regenerative agriculture and how we can actually use animals to help the planet so much right. more than row crops, so much more, you know, I, well, that's another t topic for another day, but thanks for sharing your thoughts on that. And I appreciate your, you know, I try to be the same way as like respectful 
and open-minded always as possible in terms of nutrition, because, you know, I'd like, I'd, I never want to sample s- s- trample on what somebody feels really good on and like cause some sort of weird issues, you know, like, just like keto. When I talk about short-term keto, I, I try to say that over and over. I'm like, if you're thriving and you feel amazing and your blood labs look great, like keep going, like, don't let me disrupt, you know, I'm talking to the people who just aren't thriving anymore. And they're getting in kind of that adrenal fatigue, or they're just, they're not feeling as great anymore. Like let's, let's open a conversation for what maybe some optimal paths forward. So I appreciate your perspective on that. Yeah. Well said. Okay. So let's, let's, let's see. So you're okay. So you've been on this entrepreneurial journey. You got really fit. Now you've come into health optimization. So what was next for you after learning from your Michael Jordan? <laughs> Where, where'd you go from here? Yeah. I forgot to mention before I started working with Dr. Pompla, I, I got certified with FDN functional diagnostic nutrition to have a certification. It, it was great. It taught me a lot about lab work. And it's funny. Cause when I was working one-on-one with clients, nobody asked ever asked me like, what's your certification? Like they, they knew, liked, and trust me, but yeah. uh, just an interesting thought. So what happened after I started working with Dr. Pompla, I had my company at that time was called shred fat. And I was running this company as a personal training company with my CrossFit gym. And I decided to sell my CrossFit shares and go hundred percent virtual and back to Bob Proctor. So I sold my shares, but I was still kind of transitioning. How do I go online? How do I reach more people? How do I get the message out there? And I was doing a Bob Proctor seminar and mm-hmm. Bob said, what we just said, find somebody who has done the things you want to do and reach out to them and pay them to teach it to you. Yeah. And I've heard him say this to me before, but mm-hmm. this time it landed. I was at a perfect time in my life in transition. So the first person that came to mind was Sean Croxton. Do you know, Sean? Croxton? I don't, I don't. So he, he, he had a podcast called underground wellness, which was one of the first health podcasts before Ben Greenfield, Dave Asprey okay. was like the number one podcast, but it was a long time ago. And I thought about him. I'm like, he had an amazing podcast. He grew mm. a great brand. He transitioned to more of like mindset stuff. Mm. But I emailed him. I'm like, Hey, Sean, you don't know me, but I, you know, this is my, my backstory. I'd love to pay you to teach me what you know. And he said, sure. So we got on calls. He gave me coaching business and marketing coaching. He said, all right, you got to get rid of shred fat and we got to come up with a niche. I'm like, I don't like that, Sean. I built shred, shred fat for yeah. some years, but he was, my, <laughs> he was my coach. And I'm like, he has the fruit on his tree. I'm going to listen to him. Yeah. So my coach, Sean, at that time was asking me, Tara, what do I love to study? What do I find myself inspired by? And it was keto at that time. And it still is to this day. And that's where we both came up with the idea of rebranding and niching into keto. And we came up with keto camp. And that was about four years ago. And ever since I made that decision, he was right. My growth accelerated, you know, fast forward to today, keto camp is represented in 111 countries, top 15 podcasts in the health space, alternative health space, 135,000 YouTube subs and our social media is exploding. And I feel like we're just getting started, but that's a perfect example of finding out what you're passionate about, your purpose and live on purpose with your purpose. And you'll make some amazing, amazing strides. You just hit on something so big. And as a coach, I'm like, I have to highlight this. So like, all right, maybe I'm coach minting a little bit here, but sometimes, (laughs) you know, sometimes I'll get the occasional client where I've taken in all of their stuff. I've seen how they've been training, how they've been eating. I'm looking at their blood labs, their hormones, like all this stuff I'm taking. I'm looking at their stress levels, all, all of these things. And I make these recommendations on how they should train. And I get hit back with, Hey, can you add three more days to my training? Cause I really like to train every day. And I usually run seven miles every day. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, I know. I know. And we are going to have to dial that back. And I know it's scary to let go of that, but we need to let your body recover and get it into flow and get your thyroid protection up and things will go better. And it's, you're exemplifying this, um, I, the, the image I get in my mind is when we're clinging to this way that we think this is the way we're not actually even getting that great of results, but for some reason we think this is the way. And I, the image I get is like, we're like, <laughs> so I have kids and maybe people who have kids can relate to this, but like, if you have a toddler that like really doesn't want to like leave a playground or go into the room, they will like literally like grab onto things or like holding onto the door frame or the playground. They're like kicking and screaming and they're like, no, I want to play. You know, that that's how I see us when we're clinging to this thing. That's not really working for us, but we just, for some reason, we think we got to make it work. And if somebody comes in a coach like this example you gave and they're like, 
yeah, that's not the way you're going to have to let that go. And it's like, I feel like the universe is like prying our little fingers off of the door. It's like, it's okay. It's okay. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Okay. Okay. Cause everything you want is that way, especially when you have someone who's literally showing the way, showing you the way. And if you can have the trust in them, it's like, okay, like you said, he's got the fruit on the tree. It's like, dude, I'm telling you, um, so are you going to be coachable and are you going to listen or are you going to keep holding on to the door frame or the playground, you know, and you were willing to let it go. It's like freak. I put a lot of work in this, but I feel the energy is that way. I've invested in this way. I'm going to go for it and look what freaking happened. That is yeah, so that's such a great analogy. Yeah. It's exactly how I felt. Like I was clinging <laughs> on to that door. I did not want to change. I did. I wanted to grow shred fat but I had faith in, in the coach. And that's yep. important to find the right coach who has those results and put, right. because the, the unique thing about faith and fear, they both demand for you to believe in something that you cannot see. Why not choose the positive? Why not choose yeah. the faith side? And that's what I did with him. And it was a great decision. Oh, I love what you're saying there about faith and fear. I, I talk about that a lot with anxiety and excitement. They're very similar emotions, but yeah. one's based, based in faith and one's based in fear. One's positive, one's negative. So whenever I'm feeling anxiety about some new project that I'm doing and I feel those anxious things of self-limiting thoughts, as you said, come in of like, what if it isn't good? Or what if people don't like it? And I'm like, uh, 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 when I know in my soul, this is coming from the universe. And it's like, I, I deep down, I freaking know this is the path. I just, translate that anxiety over to excitement and start expressing gratitude for it ahead of time. Like, Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so grateful. I get to create this. This is going to be so awesome. And when I'm putting that kind of energy, it's kind of like the plant that you're feeding positive energy to. That's how I feel about like the creation that I'm like birthing. It's like, this is going to be awesome. This is going to be so exciting. It makes it better. So yeah, I love beautiful. Well, how we well have said. These, the, I, I love that, that mindset. You're, you're right. It's, it's very similar energies, uh, anxiety and excite and being excited. Why not channel it into something that's positive? I love yeah. that mindset. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So keto flex, we got to talk about your book because we're so <laughs> aligned and you know what? I actually went to a dinner with Dr. Pomp and his wife with a friend of mine once. So it was just the four of us. And I had never really consumed anything of, I knew who he was, but I hadn't really consumed any of Dr. Pomp Pompa's content. And we started talking and he started talking about diet variation. And I was like, Oh my gosh. Yes. Yes. Like somebody, yes, that's exactly how I felt. So validated. I was like, I love you. Yes. I love how you see things. And I know you have that same mentality. You were talking about earlier, not eating the same freaking things all the time, not doing the same thing all the time. So can you talk about your book, Keto Flex and just what your mentality and message is in there? Yeah, that, that's so funny. And that's exactly what it is. Keto Flex is diet variation. I just you know, worded differently, but it's the same principles. Yeah. Varying your routine. Same thing like a fitness coach. You're a great fitness coach. You know, if the client does the same workout over right. and over and over, they will begin to plateau and lose the results. It's the same thing with our eating schedule or fasting schedule. Yep. We want to make sure we're constantly forcing the body to adapt because yeah. the number one priority for the innate intelligence is survival. And when you force a stressor, hormesis, it has to adapt and then good cells get stronger bad cells do not adapt. Right. So keto flex plugs right into that. It's very similar to your short-term keto approach. We both love keto. It's an amazing tool and yeah. a great tool when you use it the right way, yep. but it's one tool. Right. <laughs> There's so many tools out there, but a lot of the American, the majority of Americans, 88% are metabolically damaged and unhealthy and they need this tool, but it doesn't yeah. mean you stay with it forever. So keto flex teaches the person to get into ketosis, to get fat adapted to eventually get keto adapted, experience the amazing benefits yeah. of ketosis. And then you've done the work. Let's go in and out. And that's where the flex comes into play. You're flexing out of ketosis, flexing back in all about what we both teach metabolic flexibility, which is freedom. It's sustainable. And you get to enjoy more of your life that way. Yes. Oh my gosh. I feel so supported in my <laughs> I'm like, yes, it just makes sense. And I love how you compared it to training and everybody can kind of understand that thing. If you did 10 sets of 15 bicep curls every day for 15 years uh, at the same intensity level, same tempo, it's just, this is not going to grow anymore. It's like you achieved that result from that stressor. It's like not even a stressor anymore. And I love, since we're both kind of the mindset entrepreneurial junkies, <laughs> something I like to say is if you're, if getting out of your comfort zone is something that you've already done, that's out of your comfort zone. So for example, like getting out of my comfort zone is running a marathon, but if you've already run 10 marathons. Is it really getting out of your comfort zone or is getting out of your comfort zone, not running anymore? Oh mm. shit. Oh, now we're mm. talking. Uh, <laughs> uh. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, it's this constant 
change. Our bodies thrive on that. And I love what you're saying. Yeah. It like, it's a survival of the, of the fittest in terms mm-hmm. of our biology of our right. cells, right. To, in order to survive that stressor that we're putting on it. So good, Ben. Um, you just put this book on audible. Yes. Correct. Yeah. It was, it was quite the process, Tara. I've heard uh, that. A big challenge. I narrated the whole book myself. Good job. It came out great. It's available on Audible right now. If, if you're um, a new Audible customer, meaning you don't have an account, you could get it for free. Uh, the link for that is freeketoflex.com. Awesome. If you currently have Audible, you just go to Audible, type in Ketoflex. You could use a credit or add it to your cart. But yeah, I narrated it. Narrated it. Um, Dr. Pompa wrote the foreword. Speaking of Dr. Pompa, cool. uh, I've had endorsements from Dr. Jason Fung, Thomas DeLauer, Dr. Awesome. Bickman, Dr. Mindy. I, I'm really happy Woo. with the book. Yeah. Yes, Ben is the best. If you guys have not been exposed to Ben yet. I am so happy to make that introduction. And if you already know Ben, Thank you're you. probably like, yay, it's Ben. Okay. Tell them about um, Keto Camp. Like what is, how does Keto Camp work? Yeah. So Keto Camp is my company and we're 100% virtual and we do training, right? So we have a Keto Camp Academy. It's an online program. Everything is hosted on an online portal. All you need is internet access, which most people have. If they're listening to this, they have internet <laughs> access or watching this. So you get plugged into my four pillars where I teach that in a video, nice. step-by-step instructions. And then I offer group coaching and nice. support. And we do some cool things with that. So that's the main platform. If you want to get my coaching, ketocampacademy.com. But Keto Camp in general is all over the place and free, right? YouTube, yeah. TikTok, right yeah. now, conversations like this. So the mission at Keto Camp is to educate and to inspire 1 billion people, to wake yeah. 1 billion people up and let them know that we don't have a deficiency in medication. We have a deficiency in people not understanding how amazing their human body is. And as long as you do three things, your body could heal and you'll live a long, healthy life. And those three things are number one, identify the interference. And it's mm-hmm. usually interferences. Number mm-hmm. two, work on removing the interference. And then number three, allow your incredible body to heal itself. Because when we think think about symptoms, they are gifts to the human body. If you have a symptom right now, it's not fun to deal with them, but they are absolutely gifts. Your body, your innate intelligence is telling you something is awry. If you're on a road trip for four hours in your car and the check engine light comes on, that's a gift. It means open up the hood. Let's see what's going on. You wouldn't just cover it up and keep driving. So you don't chase the symptoms. You go underneath, you remove the cause. And then the cool thing, the symptoms go away by default. So good. You know, I was in a deep meditation experience with a friend of mine in Moab, Utah, and she was out meditating in this mountain. It was so cool. And I kind of went past her and she just looks over at me and she goes, nature. I I just got this biggest intuitive download from nature. Just saying, just let me heal you. Just let me Mm -hmm. heal you. Like, and the body will, but it's like, if we just listen and allow and get rid of that stuff and you're exactly right. I love that you use that car analogy with the check engine light, because I think because our bodies are intertwined with our souls, we feel like it's completely us. I kind of have like this separate, I have like a relationship with my body almost as like a separate thing that I really am grateful for because I get to experience everything in this life because of it. So I'm super grateful for it. And when you look at symptoms that way, it's so good. It's just like, oh, I hear you. It's just as if you're in a relationship and somebody's saying like, hey, I'm really struggling with this. You wouldn't be like, and just dismiss them and ignore them. You'd be like, oh, you know, if your significant other comes in crying, you're not going to be like, I mean, I hope not. (laughs) (laughs) It was the same thing when your body's saying like, ow, every time you're eating lactose, it like really freaking hurts. Hopefully you listen to that. I have that relationship just like you would with if your significant other was like, Hey, every time you ignore me, it kind of hurts. It's like, Oh, okay. Like I'm listening to you. And once you start listening, get rid of that thing. That's hurting it. Oh my God. I love, I love that you're talking about how the body will just heal itself that's if right. we give it the right condition. So yeah, the so human good. body is amazing. It's, it's, it's designed to heal. We just got to do our job, listen to it. Like Tara is saying, and then start working on the interference, remove the interferences love it. and you know, perfect example is, is being overweight, right? Somebody listening right now or watching might be overweight. When I was obese, I was overweight. But what I want people to understand is that nobody has a weight problem, okay? There's no such thing as a weight problem. I never had a weight problem when I was obese. It's a weight symptom, right? You don't focus on losing weight to get healthy. You focus on getting healthy and the weight comes off and it stays off. So that's just something right. we want to look at. And you could say the same thing about diabetes and cancer, they're not actually the problem. They are a result of the problem. So let's go underneath 
can wow. figure out what is caught, wow. what has caused that problem. That's what we want to look at. Yes. That's like holistic health or health optimization, like in a, you know, in a short phrase, cause it, it really is like, I, I get that way with, you know, people get this diagnosis and then this medication and I'm like, wait, wait, wait. But like, aren't you wondering why you have hypothyroidism? Like, can we ask what, like what's actually going on? Like, let's look at your stress levels and food sensitivities. And are you breathing and do you sleep and are you over-exercising? Like what's going on? You know? And that's, I love this shift. And I'm, I'm honestly honored to be part of this like shift in our society right now. Cause I feel like it, a big shift is happening there where we realize we don't have to, we do have a check engine light and we can pay attention to it. And we do have solutions. We don't have to just wait until we're driving down the freeway and our car just breaks down, you know, like we can say, Oh, Hey, and I love that mentality about body fat too. A friend of mine runs a holistic health coaching company. And she's like, body fat is amazing. Body fat actually saves your life. If your body didn't have anywhere to put that extra glucose or whatever, like you would die. Thank you, body fat. Thanks for saving my life. You know? When you start looking at it that way. And again, going back to your thing about responsibility, it's like, oh, I'm noticing that my body is storing a lot of body fat. Like what, how can I help? How can I help? Like what, what can I do? What am I doing? What am I choosing? That's causing that. And it's not in this like shameful, like disempowered, like, well, I just can't get past my milkshake and fries addiction. It's like, no, like really taking ownership over that. And you're, it's like your body's telling you it's, it's struggling. So like, are you going to show up for it? You know, you can show up for it. You can, and it's a process and I get it. I used to be hooked on standard American diet too. I used to be overweight too. And it's a process and it took me a long time to get past baked goods and all that stuff. And I truly don't crave them anymore. And I think being gentle with yourself through that process. And like you're saying, get healthy, focus on health. I'm like, yes, you can have brownies, Tara, but like, isn't there something else you could put in your body? That's equally yummy. That's also really nutrient dense and good for you. And you'll feel amazing after you start focusing on that and the game just gets easy. So I love that. And and like you said, give yourself grace. It's, and you also said it's a process. Those are two key words, grace and process. It's a process. Number one, if you're struggling right now, we, we sympathize with you. You know, we totally understand me and Tara have very similar stories. Everybody's different, but we have, we could relate. Right. And it's not the problem we have this day and age. It's not a lack of information. It's actually too much information. We are drowning (laughs) in information, right? So find somebody you really resonate with. Hopefully it's Tara. Tara is amazing. You go deep with her, her information, her podcast guest, and then The process part is you take it one day at a time. You're not competing against your husband, your wife, your friend who's doing CrossFit. You're only competing against yourself and what you did yesterday. So what can you do today to have better thoughts than you did yesterday? What can you do today to eat a little bit better today than yesterday? Take some more steps today than yesterday. And then you start stacking these habits And all of a sudden you're at a place where you're making some really good momentum and strides Mm. and there's no going back. The yeah. mentality of I'm going to go all in on Monday fails most of the time. So right. start right now and start small. And then those small tweaks lead to huge, huge, giant peaks. Just yep. stick with it. Stick and stay. It's always bound to pay. Yep. And if you do it in a self-supportive kind way of like, what do you need? What do you need? I'm, I'm like, and so, you know, sometimes it's like, Oh, I got to get my morning routine. Like it's like this punishment. If you're looking at it like that, or I got to eat healthy is going to suck. Like, it's yep. not like that. It's like, it's in a self-supportive way of like, I'm giving myself this because it's good for me. And I see my worth and I know that I'm worthy of this. Like what else is worthy of me? I, you know, I can have pizza and it's fine. And sometimes I enjoy pizza, but it's like, I know, but like, what's more honoring on my body? Is there something better that could like give more to my body than inflammatory gluten and oils and cheese? It's it's, it's okay. Every once in a while, you know, I'm not, I'm not like a super crazy stickler about it, but it's like, what, what's best for me? You know, like what's like wanting what's best for you. And just like Ben is showing so well through your whole entrepreneur journey. You're like, I am going to show up for me because I know that I deserve all this. Like I'm what's best for me, you know? And like, what's what, how can I serve? How can I get into this energy of this high vibrational frequency of like loving myself, which then helps you love others and serve others, you know? So anyway, you're just such a great example of that, Ben. And mm-hmm. guys, if you don't follow him on TikTok and Instagram and all that, like it's so much good information. It's just, you're straight to the point. There's like, here's some practical stuff that can help, you know? And it's just so obvious that you're here to serve and help others. So thank you for for showing up the way that you do in the health industry. You're definitely one of everybody's favorites. And um, I guess in closing, 
where do you want to direct people? The Ben Asadi. So it's B E N A Z A D I. You guys probably saw in the title, um, <laughs> on all the social platforms. And then of course, keto flex, um, is the best place to go just Amazon or your website. Oh, for the, yeah, for the book, book. keto, keto flex book.com goes to Amazon and it has all three versions, paperback, Kindle, and then now the audibles there. And then my my website, benazadi.com has all of the um, socials and all that. But, you know, thank you for what you just shared, Tara, you know, the, the mission that the 1 billion people to educate, it's not just my mission it's yours. It's our mission. And that's how we're going to hit it. Like conversations like this world-class thinking, not competing with each other, but collaborating and creating with each other. That's where it's at. And that's the mindset you have. That's why you're so successful. And that's why you're just getting started. I'm just getting started. And I really hope this made a big difference for your audience. And I am truly grateful for today's conversation too. Thank you so much, Ben. And guys, if you're listening and this speaks to you and you feel this call, we need lots of help. We need lots of, we need lots of hands. Roll up your sleeve. If you're ready to work, if this is not about you, it's about helping. We roll up your sleeves, baby. Because <laughs> you're exactly right. There's a lot of people out there that need help. And I bet you will hit that billion. Uh, you maybe already have just from the ripple effect. Because when one person gets healthy, that True. bleeds into their family and their friends and everyone they know. So yeah, it's, it's a beautiful mission. And again, I guess we'll close it up from here. But thank you so much, Ben, for taking the time. Guys, go find his stuff. Go find his book. Ben is the best. Make sure you listen to his podcast. Keto Camp Podcast is the name of the podcast, right? That's right. Yeah. Yes. So all right. Well, and then from there. Thank you so much, Ben. Thank you, Tara.